Hi everyone! Meet Chris UK, aka Kryptonite Physics. He's a flat earther who's done something absolutely unprecedented. He has spent four videos setting up a bunch of background, including like how vectors add together, how inertial reference frames work, all that stuff, in order to set up for a case against, or well, what at least resembles an attempt at a coherent case against, well, reality, you know, the heliocentric model, the globe, all of that. Now, this is a Again, an unprecedented amount of work for a flat earther. Usually they just scream things they saw in memes. So, <laughs> of course we're gonna have to watch him crash and burn. This is his final challenge. How to debunk kryptonite physics. This one sheet explains all you need to know to try and debunk the kryptonite physics. Why are you using text-to-speech? Are you afraid you'll be recognized? Do you have a speech impediment? Or are you simply too stupid to plug a microphone into your computer? Uh, considering you're a flat earther, I know which one I'm betting on. At the top, for the fish bowls, A and B, it is the same experience. Well, sort of. I see where you're going. Both A and B can think of themselves as the origins of inertial reference frames. In other words, both are experiencing the same net acceleration vector, the null vector, zero. But the experiences are still not quite identical. Fish B can see the carriage moving relative to B itself and to the ground. It's therefore an empirical fact that A is moving at V1 relative to B and to the ground, but for purely practical reasons A can't know this. But we can fix this by putting B in a carriage at rest with respect to the ground. If we do so, then there is no experiment either fish can perform within their respective carriages that would have different results for the two of them, so then their experiences would indeed be identical. This is why constant motion, even at a constant velocity of zero, has no meaning unless the velocity is measured relative to something. And you just confirmed that you agree with this, so... You said you were gonna... Disprove all this? Astrophysics and the heliocentric model rely on this physics. So you're saying you can debunk the heliocentric model and the globe, which is not just a model but also an empirical fact, by not understanding freshman year high school physics. The bottom section. We are first asking what is the difference for the B on wheel A and C. On C, it is just rotating. The B is at a constant velocity. No, the velocity keeps changing all the time. It's changing direction. Velocity is a vector. The speed, the size of the velocity is constant. But the velocity is not. High school physics. Under a constant force. No, force is also a vector. Its direction keeps changing, so the force is not constant. The size of the force is constant, but not the force itself. Again, high school physics. For the B in wheel A. We refer to known physics. The B is at an ever-changing rate of velocity in an ever-changing direction. Yes, but... A constantly changing rate of acceleration. Now, once again, the rate of acceleration, the size of the acceleration vector is the same. But the acceleration keeps changing. However, in both cases, the acceleration changes in such a way that it always points toward the center of the wheel. And since both acceleration vectors have constant size, that should tell you something very important. We'll come back to that. We have now confirmed, with known physics, that the experience for the B on wheel A and C are different. If you think differently, you are denying known science. Correct, actually. But not for the reason you think. The difference between their experiences is that C can observe that A is translating relative to the ground. We now move to the B in the carriage, on wheel B. 
The experience for the B is the same as on wheel A. No, one is in a carriage and the other is not. B can't know that it's translating because it doesn't have a common frame of reference with the others. Putting it in a carriage changes nothing for the B. Yes, it does. It makes it so that B can't measure V1. The question, hey, B, are you sitting on a wheel that is translating, is a meaningless question to B. There would be no experiment B could perform inside the carriage that would reveal to it that it is, in fact, in motion relative to the ground. According to relative motion and inertial reference frames, the B should now have the same experience as being on C, just rotating. Look, it's this simple. If all the bees closed their eyes, their experiences would be identical. It's just as with the fish, and you already agreed to that. The observer's position or velocity can not change what is happening to the bee. No, and no one says otherwise. It changes how the situation is described. High school physics, Chris. To debunk this, you can deny relative motion and inertial reference frames has anything to do with the heliocentric model. Okay, so let me see if I understand your knockdown blow here. You think that we should be able to feel the Earth rotating as it translates in its orbit around the Sun, and because we can't, that disproves reality. Okay, let's look at the math. First, we can't feel velocity. You already agreed to this when you talked about the fish. What we feel is acceleration, which is a change of velocity over a time interval. This calculation shows that the acceleration experienced in the time interval between t and t plus dt is the same for all three b's. If the math is too hard to follow, maybe you haven't done any math with vectors, here's a way to show it geometrically. Since the wheels are identical and rotating with equal tangential speed, it follows that the acceleration is the same. Now, the question we need to address next is, what is the acceleration we should expect to experience from the Earth's rotation? At the equator, where it's at its maximum, the centripetal acceleration, what we would experience as a centrifugal acceleration, is 0.03 meters per second squared, which, one, we should not expect to feel, and two, is already included in g. In other words, it's acceleration that we experience all the time, and therefore we don't pay attention to it. But still, this is a very small acceleration. It's the rate of acceleration of a car that goes from zero to 100 kilometers per hour, or, or 60 miles per hour, if you will, in 15 minutes. You can deny or ignore known physics, rigid body rotation with translation, and pretend it doesn't exist. No, you deny known physics when you say that. We can't feel translation, we feel acceleration. And in this case, the acceleration is simply too small to be felt. It can be measured, it has effects that can be observed, but we can't feel it. I'm not denying known science. You don't understand what known science actually has to say. And by the way, the heliocentric model and the globe are known science. Or you can explain how magically putting it in a carriage with wheels, or you standing next to it, changes anything. Again, without the carriage, the bee can see that it's translating, because it has visual access to points of reference such as the ground, relative to which it can measure its translational velocity. With the carriage, it has no way to measure its translational velocity, because velocity has to be measured relative to something. The only thing the bee could determine is that the wheel has a translational velocity of zero relative to the floor of the carriage. That's the difference. Without the carriage, the translational velocity relative to the ground can be known. With it, it can't. It's obvious what's going on here, Chris. You looked for physics that seems to support your beliefs, but you didn't bother looking at the bigger picture. You looked at rotation with translation, which is more complicated than one might initially suspect, as it involves addition of vectors, some of which keep changing. And you did so without learning about basic things like velocity and acceleration. Hell, you don't even know the difference between speed and velocity. 
which is very, very basic. How these concepts work is part of the context in which the physics you looked up must be understood. It's prerequisite knowledge, and you don't have it. Therefore, you can't make sense of what you looked at, and you come away from it with the wrong idea. If you print this off on one sheet, you will have in your hand all the evidence you need to totally discredit relative motion and inertial reference frames. Um, no, I have all the evidence I need to conclude that you have no clue what you're talking about. That despite being far more ambitious than any flur I've come across, you're just as dumb as the rest of them. Now, you watching this may feel that you're dumb as well. You didn't follow my math presentation. You looked at those calculations and went, what? That's actually a good sign. Stupid people can't tell that they're stupid. They're too stupid. So if you feel dumb when you see something you don't understand, that's actually a good sign. You're ignorant of that specific subject. You're not stupid. But ignorance is something you can do something about. Assuming that you're like me and have a job, a family, bills to pay, you know, a life that prevents you from going back to school once you're done with it, my suggestion is Brilliant.org, the sponsor of this video. At Brilliant, you can take interactive online courses in a wide variety of math, science, and computer-related topics and do something about that ignorance, all at your own pace. Unlike school, Brilliant fits your schedule. The courses feature interactive exercises that really make you learn. Active learning always beats passive learning, like just reading or watching a video lecture. Here, you read a short section and do an exercise that relates to it before moving on to the next section. These exercises also award you XP, and if you get enough XP in a week, you level up. It makes the learning feel like a game and motivates you to actually do the exercises and not just click past them. New content is added all the time. Recent additions include courses in data analysis, like predicting with probability, AI, like how LLMs work, and programming, like thinking in code. But of course, you also have classic math courses like everyday math and reasoning with algebra. There's something there for everyone, whether you want something to advance your career or just get rid of that feeling of I must be stupid because I suck at math. Click the link below, brilliant.org slash martimer81 to get started on your free 30-day trial period today and get a 20% discount on your annual premium subscription fee. Thanks for watching. See ya.